In the German Alpine region we found a mystic and foggy place to show you the all new Volvo V60 cross country. So this crossover version of this all new generation of the V60. Here on Autogefuel, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. Today with Thomas and we'll take on a detailed tour on the exterior, the interior and driving on-road and off-road. Enjoy that together with us in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! When you're surrounded by snow walls, it always creates a very special atmosphere. There's no echo. It's a really interesting silent sound atmosphere and maybe also some ASMR, right? <laughs> then the lower part here of the cross country features those plastic fenders and I think they really do fit the car. You also get a special unique front grille with those dots and the vertical fins. You know the normal momentum trim would just have the vertical fins and the R design has those black dots and the inscription has more chrome effect. This one here is something in between. And then you can see you get those LED headlamps from standard equipment and they have those Thor's Hammer LED daytime running lights. They always look quite cool. 4 meters 76, 15 foot 6 or 187 inches is the length of the V60. Of course, the same for the cross-country variant. And this is 14 centimeters longer than the predecessor generation. Pretty interesting because that will majorly change the rear legroom, I can promise you, so far already. And then you can see the Cross Country, or CC, just to have the short abbreviation, has those crossover wheel arches in plastic. It already comes with 19 inch rims, look pretty massive. Also, the car is six centimeters higher from suspension. That leaves us then with a ground clearance of 21 centimeters. We have the contrasting chrome roof rails right there. And a very sensual design here with those shoulders strong with this design line. And I think it just works so well with this vehicle to put it in a crossover style, especially here in this fusion red metallic tone color for today. What do you think? The rear perspective here with those beautiful daytime running rear lights, vertical and horizontal stress. This is also new in this generation here that it's a little bit slimmer as for the head for the for the tail lamp unit as well. And well the cross country gets again special badge right here also with this stamped in name. I think even from the rear it, to me it's really a very very beautiful estate here in this CC look. Then I can maybe also excuse that those ones here are just fake exhaust tips, the real exhaust are on the inside. However, there's also no performance engine available anyway. And again, we have some more colors for you, such as black. Or what about a crystal white one, where in this case, of course, those black wheel arches form the biggest contrast. And this show car with the bike on top, this one is called Maple Brown. This is the car key. It controls here on the side, but you can also use the keyless entry. Putting your hand on the outside closes the car, also the side mirrors flip in. Putting your hand inside opens it. And by the way, door closing sound. Mm, sounds a little bit echoey, you know? So, but what's really nice, soft materials here on the top side of the door, and it also has a interesting structure for sure and I love this bright interior top part against reflections dark but the lower part then bright well the door pocket is actually quite slim so it's not too easy to put big bottles in there but then wow this is so cool here from the restaurant interior Bowson Wilkins sound system as well optional one good nice sound 
Here again the top part against reflections dark, and then the lower part in bright. I just love this color style for Stuhl. You can pick different colors. As for the seats, by the way, there are also the so-called city weave seats available for the V60. We've seen it in, an, in, in another review. We'll also link that one. That will consist of fabric and leatherette. Those ones here are the optional animal skin package or also with the cross-country edition, at least in Germany, the animal skin comes automatically. And that's of course not a really good choice, but they offer those city weave option, which looks really cool and also gives you more climate comfort in summer and winter. Here at the moment when it's cold, those seats are also very cold. You have to wait for the seat heating and so on. The cover here, by the way, of the dashboard, also good quality. This is a leatherette cover you can optionally go for. This adds a very nice styling and is at the same time still sustainable. The steering wheel, I mean, it has a very compact size, that's for sure. Those buttons here, they are, you know, rather seamlessly integrated. Left side is for the cruise control, right side for controlling the instruments, but it's really hard to do so, for sure. Um, if I put on the ignition, always gives a warning then when the um, door is also open. You can see here, those ones are the digital instruments. And I can also start the engine and you can see everything of that. Mm, the menu system is a little bit hard to control and you can see they also lag a little bit behind so they are not so fast in the reaction time then overall and you know it takes some time until you um, get used to the system here and to, to control stuff and so on. Well what's really nice is that we have this aluminum style also here as the inserts also part of the Scandinavian design of the interior. So when we as 1 meters 86 or Six foot one. That's me. And there is still some headroom left, but it's getting quite close. You shouldn't be too tall. And also you see the A pillar due to this rather flat design comes quite close. However, the seat comfort from the seat form is really great. Top notch also with Volvo. I really love that. And I think read a lot of comments that a lot of you guys also agree about that. So you'll find a good seating position here. You sit a little bit higher, six centimeters higher, as I said earlier, with a cross country. That also helps, again, this upright seating comfort. Not exactly SUV style yet, more crossover. I think that's overall quite nice. So um, I like the change that they have put it a little bit higher in the cross country. That gives you definitely some advantage in the seating comfort even more. And I also turn on the engine that you can see the head-up display. This one is also an interesting option. You have the speed in your view field or also the maximum speed or also something from the GPS info if a route is running. Interior overview here again with the nice leather red cover. Additional bows and workings speaker right there that also visually looks pretty cool. And the central Scandinavian design here again with those brushed aluminum style and the bright I think the, you know the the mix here of the bright and lower and the uh, black on the top part. This is really cool. And again, if it would be bright on the top part, it would be having more reflections. So it's a good choice. Those vertical vents here are very prominent. Maybe they are a little bit too much in design. This 9.2 inch screen, the standard, whereas those 12.3 inch digital instruments, those are optional. Normally, you get an 8 inch instrument cluster right there in screen, and then analog ones. But, you know, this one pretty much stand on all press vehicles. So uh, most journalists even don't know how the standard ones look like anymore. Well, overall, I think a beautiful Scandinavian design. Almost no buttons at all. This is here the wheel for the volume still. And mandatory um, hazard lights, buttons, but everything else is done with a screen. We'll also can take a short look at it very soon. And here the shifting lever. Pretty easy to control. You just pull them all the way back when the car is running, then you're in D mode. And this top part also with a nice cover, good build quality. You can slide it open for cup holders. So, well, this front cubby hole is pretty much useless. You can almost put nothing in there. 12 volt power supply. The driving mode select is also very beautiful in the design. And then pretty much fixed and attached this armrest cover and then you can put your smartphone in here for example for the Apple CarPlay connection two USB supplies right there.
So the infotainment system up close that the temperature unit is also running. I'll put on the engine just for a second. The temperature you can read right here. Click like this or click like here. So um, it's not too well to control while driving. It's more set to drivers who put it like to 22 degrees Celsius and leave the AC on and just leave it like this. Or you can also use the voice control for that. Set the temperature to 23 degrees. Temperature set to 23 degrees. Here we go. So that actually works well and where the vents are coming from you do it right here or also activate deactivate the AC. The rear view camera is set in right there. It's of course a little bit blurry right now because the snow has melted right there. There's also a 360 degree view available. It's a quite cool camera system but you can see it has its limits when it's raining or when it's snowy. Um, then you can't see too much here to the sides of course then you can see how you're not damaging your alloys. The rest of the infotainment system, and let me just turn off the engine for that. Um, yeah, go to P again, then you can turn it off. So the rest, this is the main menu. To the left, you can activate, for example, the EC that we'll do later when we do the snow driving. On the right side, you can, for example, access Apple CarPlay that's integrated like this then. You can Play your music and at the same time also use the car internal GPS. That's possible, of course, very important. Like this could be a little bit more responsive for sure, but overall is doing a good job. This way you can zoom in and out. Like this you cannot, so you always have to maximize it there first. And this sound system here with the sound experience, optional one, you can also pick the Gothenburg Concert Hall. That's the echo sound, good for classic music, but I can also recommend it for electronic music. And the options is on the top part. You really have to learn the system once and then you actually know where everything is located. That's then fine. And when you hold this button here, then you come to into cleaning mode and you can you know use a tissue or something or yeah the <laughs> thank you Michelle the Volvo supplied um, extra microfiber and then also clean it without uh, doing any special commands for example doing those uh, you know the commands to flip the back uh, back headdress I'm not sure if it's available right here because then I could hit Michelle but <clears throat> hey that's interesting. The headrest fold does not work here anymore. Does it work when I put on... Ah, there we go. <laughs> shall we Shall we do it? Shall we do it, guys? <laughs> oh, Michel prepared himself. He prepared, so he wasn't hit. <laughs> One of my favorite details is this frameless rear mirror. It looks elegant and you have a very good view. And just above that is the opening for the panoramic roof brings a lot of light and the interior is actually quite wide and long for both so it's a nice feature for sure especially if you are in let's say moderate climate where it doesn't get too uh, too warm especially in summer times however if it gets warm you also have a cover so when I close it again you can see we also have this sliding cover right there also in a bright beige style really like that So let's get in the rear compartment and the good thing here about the new generation of the V60 is it has become longer so you now have reasonable legroom in the rear. Well those seats are still quite thick and when you're in the lowest position you cannot really put your feet underneath the feet so you would need to lift it a little bit higher that would be even better but then you can see it still does fit with 1m86 or 6 foot 1. When you have the panoramic roof you do lose a little bit of headroom there's still enough left for tall adults but if you're even taller then you should leave out the panoramic roof. What's also nice is that we have some soft touch at the rear doors here so that's really a premium quality. Yeah Michelle tests that for us as well <laughs> so that's really cool. We also have a um, separate unit here for the climb if you want so and you can also optionally get seat heating for the rear seats that's pretty cool and a real power supply here in the rear that's also good maybe to recharge some laptops the seating position here in general is also quite comfy then we also have some cup holders full of out you also have a ski hatch right there so um cannot open it from here 
we have to do it from the rear. That's it, isofix at the, at the outside of the seats each. And last but not least, well, those seats here, you can flip them, but you cannot vary the angle. And you've seen those head restraints, they automatically flip down. You should just always watch out that you don't get hit by them, because that can really hurt. Not that I would speak of own experience or something. Do you remember the XC90? Yeah, one? yeah, the XC90 review once and uh, Michelle was hitting like the button in the entertainment screen from the front. And then you can basically remote release them from the front and that can hurt. The rear hatch, you can open it with the key or just right here or with the foot kick opening mechanism if you have ordered that option. And the liter figure, that's the theoretic one, 530 liters up to 1360. We'll soon take a look at that. This cover here is one of our main criticism points with this, with this car. Well, um, you can put it open like this, but then it stays that way and it's not moving up and down automatically. And so often I forgot it in the top part and then you can see nothing from the front when you're driving. You have to stop again. So I now tend just to do it like this and then leave it like this as it is, then it's not blocking any view. What is cool, however, is this split because you can maybe like secure a bag, something that has to stand upright there, you know, with shopping or if you don't have to use the whole trunk, that's really a very good feature. Then taking the measurements, this is here in length, so just above a meter, or some small net here, for example, to fix those bottles right there. And in width, it should also be approximately a meter, yeah. So also about a meter in width. And then at the right side, right here, there's a 12 volt power supply, as well as the towing bar we can flip out. There it is. So and then you just have to pull up menu like this, and then also you can release it again like this and then store it. Here we go. And there's also the electrical flipping of the seats, like this and like this. And also the head restraints flip as we shown you earlier and then you can have a very well usable loading area. And let's see how that one plays out. Up till the end of the seats it's 160 but to my driving seating position is 180, over 180 in meters, so very well usable. And of course, in the middle part, even longer, so then we easily get over two meters then to the front gear shifting stick. So, and just that you get some dimensions, this is a standard backpack here. You can also better imagine how it is here, even in the height, because this one here is. The maximum of was 67 centimeters in the height right here and to the loading cover is just over 40 centimeters. So, I mean, past Volvo cars from the big estate, they had more luggage room, that's for sure, but I think you can still very well use it. And last but not least, the child safety test from this electric hatch. Do it like this. Oh, whoa. Hmm. Not too sensitive, but I think, yeah, still acceptable. So what about the engine right here? Hydraulic struts, as we expected. Volvo uses two liter four-cylinder engines, both for petrol and diesel. And let me just list them shortly so on the diesel side the d3 with 150 horsepower a d4 that's this one with 190 horsepower this one also the entry diesel for the cross cross country because the cross country does not offer the very entry models and both with front wheel drive or all wheel drive that is in the front plus rear on demand system and then the petrol side is t5 250 horsepower front wheel drive there's a T6 310 horsepower all-wheel drive, or then there's a T6 plug-in hybrid with 340 horsepower system power, or a T8 plug-in hybrid 390 horsepower system power. So that's about the engine overview. 
as I said, no six cylinder at Volvo whatsoever. They're really going the way. Also, less and less diesel. They're not developing the diesels anymore. So they are all going in this plug-in hybrid direction. And of course, soon the first all electric cars from Volvo will also arrive. This one here again, as I said, D4 for the day with all-wheel drive. But since it's this front-wheel drive plus rear-wheel drive system, you don't really realize so much while driving if it's an all-wheel drive or just a front-wheel drive version. You just realize it when you have very slippery conditions for the front wheels and you really hammer the throttle. Then you would realize you have the all-wheel drive version of the car. So yes, you can also just live with the front wheel drive version of those vehicles because they are overall not that much so, let's say, so performance oriented. Welcome to Thomas's driving lounge with the Volvo V60 Cross Country. And the big question is, of course, we've told you earlier, there's a suspension change basically in the car, sits a little bit higher. How does that feel here for the new generation of the V60? And the first impression definitely feels good. So you feel that you sit a little bit higher, have a little bit better overview. It's not that you would have this typical SUV feeling because this is a crossover, but it's just a little bit higher that you don't have this typical mid-size sedan, typical mid-size estate feeling. So I think it's actually a, a good mixture. And they also have a so-called comfort suspension in here. So one of the um, suspensions you could also take for the normal ones. But then this one here in the trim, six centimeters higher. So they've put the suspension six centimeters higher that the overall ground clearance then is at 21 centimeters. And I think that's definitely a good way to go to. Mm. here on the motorway as we're starting here we'll soon also get to some countryside driving and later on also to some off-road snow driving but here on the motorway i think it's also a good vehicle for that there is not you know too much shake up or something it still feels stable here at the moment you can also see the line spot monitor one of the optional assistance systems that's very well integrated also i think in a very elegant way more elegant than those yellow triangles uh, we know for example and the noise insulation here at 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour is also quite good that's also one thing they massively improved from the last generation to this generation here of the v60 same also accounts for the s60 for the sedan version so better in the noise insulation and gives you a very calm driving and this is also the main characteristic of this vehicle even more stressed with the suspension setup that we have right here because this car does not try to be sporty. The steering is very soft. It doesn't give you the best sporty feedback. The suspension is not stiff at all and the overall car together with the very good seats, you know, the seat form is very good that it gives you comfort. And then again, the general setup plus the cross country nuance, so to say, that gives you a very relaxed feeling and not a sporty one. I think that's totally fine because a lot of the manufacturers are trying to go sportier and sportier and sportier. And of course, it is fun at some point. And if you like that, that's perfectly fine. And yeah, you know, like the Mercedes C-Class, a BMW 3 Series or an Audi A4 is maybe a little bit more fun to drive in the sporty appearance, but this one here definitely had this, has this comfort focus and I think it's also good that they do that in this way. Now at some countryside driving speed and that's even more silent than for sure. If you compare it to some older Volvo estates, yeah, you don't have the best overview anymore because the design is more important nowadays than those real square dimensions. But still, it's quite reasonable. And the assistance system here with a blind spot monitor, you should definitely go for that. The autonomous emergency brake, that one is already included. That's good. And the ACC, you can go for optional, or if you click on the right button here and you also go in for this top trim, there's also the so-called pilot assist, a semi-autonomous driving feature, level two. That means you always have to keep your hands at the steering wheel, but if there would be a traffic jam or something, then we could basically let the car drive. Again, we're supposed to keep the heads at the steering wheel at all times. 
but especially in traffic situations, you can more relax than the car does, you know, the accelerating and braking, also the, um, the, the steering at the same time. This D4 engine we're testing here, the four-cylinder, two-liter diesel engine with 190 horsepower, it gives sufficient power. It's also actually quite well insulated from the cabin, so you don't have much engine noise in here. You don't really realize, oh, wait a minute, that's a diesel. So that's uh, also totally fine. I think it's also a suitable one for this car because they are offering the two-liter four-cylinder anyway both for diesel and petrol and again since it's not the sportiest car you also don't feel that you would be needing a very very sporty engine for this very vehicle then you can maybe save some money as for this respect because that's one of the biggest drawbacks of this vehicle it can get so expensive i mentioned the base price for the cross country earlier when we take german reference prices and that was at about just above 50,000 euros and with all the extra equipment we have then here in this very vehicle it's at 74,000 euros. Whew. That's really expensive. To me I think too expensive for sure for a mid-size vehicle or what do you think? So keeping it with the base engine would be one thing. You can check that the price doesn't get too high even. The, automot uh, the <laughs> automatic gearbox, not autonomous gearbox, well you could argue, is it working autonomously, the gearbox? Hmm, philosophical question for sure. The automatic gearbox is doing a phenomenal job. It's one of my uh, favorite ones for sure. You hardly feel that there's any transition in shifting the gears. Really very well done. At the same time, you, well, you don't have any uh, shifting pedals right here at the steering wheel, but you can put it here to the left side, then you can shift up or down yourself. Um, only strange thing, when I push it forward, it shifts up. When I push it backward, it shifts down. I still feel we had it with a couple of vehicles. Should be the other way around for sure. So that's mainly when you're going downhill for a longer period of time that you can use the engine brake as well. But usually you just leave it in automatic mode and that's it. If you want some more sporty shifting, then you go to the dynamic mode. Then the car turns up the gears a little bit higher. That helps, for example, when you want to do some overtaking maneuvers at the motorway. But then back again to the cross-country style, because, you know, the suspension is only changing when you have the adaptive suspension. Just to mention that Volvo also is offering adaptive suspensions, you know, in general. But um, a lot of those, of course, come without the adaptive suspension. Then you also have different steps you can vary from. So here again, the steering feeling in those corners is not the best one. It is super easy to steer and I also don't have to steer too much. But then again, you know, it doesn't, doesn't give me the best feedback for sure. But it's stable enough, so you cannot really complain that it would be shaking up just because they've put the suspension a little bit higher. So would I actually go for a V60? or a V60 cross country. Well, I really like the crossover style on the exterior. I also like this changed little bit higher riding style. I really like that it does suit the vehicle for sure. But then again, the cross country adds some more features that it gets more expensive. I would probably then go with a V60 Momentum. So mid trim level to keep the price at low stuff. Also not pick the animal skin seats. Um, so yeah. Really like the cross country style, but um, not exactly the package they're combining it with. That's, you know, would be, would be my uh, verdict as for this one. If we force it here a little bit here, even if we go some right or left, you see, again, I cannot induce the shaking that much. I could, of course, when I'm driving way faster or something. But again, I think they found a good suspension setup here. Even when we go over some bumps, it stays very comfortable but at the same time you don't lose too much feeling for the whole vehicle. Here again, I just had a normal acceleration for this diesel engine. It was quite quick, even though I wasn't really pushing it. And it's, you know, it just gives you a very refined feeling, although it doesn't have too big of a displacement. As for the consumption figure, we had this diesel also so far and 
look at the consumption figure right now, it's just confirming it once again. That's one of the problems. They are actually quite high in the consumption figures usually, so you have to be, you know, at least between eight and nine liters on one kilometers, and that's definitely too high, especially for a diesel engine. So for this mid-size vehicle with a diesel engine, I rather expect some six to seven liters consumption with diesel, if not less. Um, so yeah, that's one of the problems Volvo still has. They are too high in the consumption, that's for sure. Um, you know, probably it will only change when they go all electric or something. Their cars overall are in general very heavy. You know, they even it out a little bit because they make it just in this, you know, very, very comfortable style. So it doesn't appear that much as a disadvantage while driving, but definitely a disadvantage as for the consumption. But overall, I think the V60 cross country made a very good impression both on motorway and on the countryside roads here. Definitely a nice, comfortable car to drive and enjoy. And now we have a small snow off-road round for you. We start with the EC on. By the way, the all-wheel drive, I told you earlier, is front plus rear-wheel drive on demand. Of course, as soon as some slippery conditions in the front are being detected, also torque is being transported to the rear wheels. We had that also with a small insert. The hybrids, by the way, will not be available in the combination with the cross-country. That's also a, a, you know, something I wanted to note. And you can see here with the ESC on, I mean, there are a lot of snow ruts in there, but basically the car is being kept safe and straight. I also had a longer transition period to this testing ground here earlier on snowy roads, and this worked very well. Of course, there's always laws of physics. So if I just hit the brakes here, see, it just takes a while until the car comes to a standstill and you have to bear in mind the weight of the car. So always drive slowly in those conditions. That's the most important thing. Overall, the car delivers me a very good, safe feeling for sure. It is not a performance all-wheel drive that you do realize. Here, for example, you know, the, the, the front inner wheel was reduced in speed, so the car is being kept relatively straight. So I can go to an ESC sport mode here, and when I, for example, I'm, let me show the difference. When here now in the ESC on, hit the throttle. See, I, I went max on the throttle, but not so much has happened. When I go here, then <laughs> the car gets more wheel spin, especially in the, in the rear then, goes more forward, RPMs turn up higher and so on. So there's then actually a big difference. And it's also the case that the car slides around a little bit more. You can see I can do more turning with the wheel. The car gets a little bit more unstable like this. You have to work with the car definitely way more. And here it's very tricky now. This is not a real, very well made track. It's not even out. There are some snow ruts from the um, rounds we've driven here before. So this is really challenging for the car, even if you can't see that so well on the camera and also on condition where the cross country with the, it's by the way, 6.5 centimeters higher, even not only six centimeters. So if you want to be very correct about that. So this increased height then really does a good job, especially when some snow is um, you know, forming some small snow hills on the road here. But you can see I get a little bit more loose with the car. That's of course more fun, but for you know normal road conditions, public traffic, you would always leave the EC completely on. However, it's also not possible to put it completely off. That's not possible with the Volvo models. And here, as a last hurrah, I can also show you when we are in this sport EC mode, what you can do is, you can, when you hit the throttle and turn the wheels, you can do some donuts right here. Um, Maybe also put it here in the um, uh, first gear, for example, just you know for fun purposes. Doesn't make sense, of course, but it's still always a lot of fun. You hear that the uh, brakings, the electronic stuff, is still being applied here now. Oh. <laughs> this is also one of the safety systems. So this car is not laid out that you do some stuff with that. See that the the belt was like really keeping us tight. 
because that was part of the run of road um, protection because when I'm doing stuff like this, the car thinks, oh, wait a minute, that's really out of control. Probably that car is going off the road at the moment and then this safety stuff is being applied. Really good thing to know that this works because you wouldn't usually do the stuff I'm doing here in your real life. And now to our conclusion for today with the V60 Cross Country. I think the styling fits the car very well. A little bit higher, crossover wheel arches, unique styling in the front. Do you like it as well? On the interior, especially this new generation of the V60 offers more build quality, even more refined Scandinavian design. And also, I think, good choice overall as for the options. But then again, as for the Cross Country, it comes automatically with some choices you might not want to go for and then the price also gets higher. Most important change in this new generation is for sure the rear legroom. Because the car is a little bit longer, you have more rear legroom than before. Well, and as for the trunk, yeah, a little bit annoying with the cover. They should find a better solution for that. But still, the trunk space is very well usable and a very comfortable drive. This comfort suspension also works very well with that vehicle. It's also put a little bit higher. If you seek something between an SUV and a classic sedan or a state style, I think that's still a good offering. And this cross-country characteristic, also with the visual part, it somehow already has you know something very special at Volvo because it already has a tradition there. Interesting also that they are going for new sales models. For example, you can not only just you know get it for the normal base price. There's this new Care by Volvo program that you can pay a fixed rate, and that's about it. In this case here in Germany for the cross country it would be about 729 euros. That sounds quite expensive at first, but like insurance taxes um, and everything like um, uh, inspection tires everything would be included in that that you just need to have this rate plus the fuel i think this model will come more and more in the future also with other car brands because it's quite complicated to have a full overview of all the cost a car might create or the list price is maybe not really realistic um, for your real purchase price later on or maybe for your leasing rate so I think adding an, you know, a together overall price for one fixed rate, I think that's overall a good idea to make a little bit easier for the customer. Or what do you think about those new sales models? So thank you so much for tuning in today to Autogefuel. Please tell us your opinion about the new V60 cross country and also tune in next time.